everyone, today I am here to test out some hacks because if you watch my Rachel Loves channel, you know I love me some good hacks, especially Pinterest. I think I spend far too many hours on it. And what better hacks to test out than, of course, some coffee hacks because when, when do I not have a mug of coffee in my hand? It's literally never. So today I'm gonna be testing out three different hacks for you guys to see if there are some other ways to either repurpose some coffee grounds or eat coffee, <laughs> stay tuned. And so without further ado, let's get into this. For hack number one, let's address the whole eating coffee thing because I found that to be intriguing. And it is in the form of coffee gummies. Yes, that is correct, caffeinated, gummies. I figure this is probably a really good hack for those of you that are in like college university right now and just need something to munch on while you're studying late into the evening and just need a little pick me up of caffeine without going overboard. And these ones are even better because they're latte gummies so they got like the little layers in them. I'm so excited. So what you are going to need to make these for yourselves, you're going to need some form of gelatin whether it's vegan or otherwise, milk, coffee, condensed milk, as well as some silicone mold. So first we're gonna make the coffee layer and all you're gonna do is you're going to put onto the stove some coffee, some milk, and some of the gelatin, stir it all up so it's dissolved, and pour it into about a third of the silicone mold. And then you're gonna stick that into the fridge to set, it only takes about five minutes or so, and you're going to move on to the condensed milk layer. And for that, you're just gonna put onto the stove some gelatin again with some water until it is fully dissolved, and then you're going to pour in the condensed milk, mix it all together, and then you're gonna pour that layer on top of the set layer of the silicone mold gelatin things. And this time you're only gonna fill it up to the two-third mark, and then you're going to let it set again in the fridge, it's probably again only five minutes or so, pull it out and you're gonna pour in the rest of the coffee mixture. So you're creating sort of like a little, like a little Oreo, but in gummy coffee flavor form. And then I let them set overnight and I brought them out in the morning and this is what they look like. So you can see they have this like weird crust layer on top, which was pretty disgusting. So I'm gonna say if you're gonna make these, probably best put some saran or something on top so they preserve a little bit better. Um, so cutting that off and tasting them, there are a couple of things that I would do differently if I was going to make this recipe again. Number one, my condensed milk layer was far too thick. All I could taste was condensed milk, which is not a bad thing, but not a great thing if I'm trying to make like coffee flavored gummies. And the second thing that I would do is I would make the coffee much stronger next time. So I'd almost double the amount of grounds um, for the amount of water when I was making the coffee because I just felt like I was lacking in that coffee taste. And maybe it's just because it was overpowered by the condensed milk, but even just tasting the coffee section, it just wasn't powerful enough for me. I wanted to taste that coffee flavor. So I mean, I think if I made those adjustments, they would be really good and they'd be a tasty addition, but would they be something that I would make on a regular basis? Probably not. It still was a little weird for me to be eating coffee. I think I would just stick to like a regular mug if it was me, um, but they were fun and they were a little bit different and unique. So if you like gummies, you probably enjoy these. Now on to recipe number two, and we are going to be testing out these little like healthy butter pods that you put into your coffee. Stay with me, this is interesting. It's supposed to be a take on bulletproof coffee, which is a combination of some very special oils and butters and combined it into coffee, frothed it all together. It's supposed to increase the longevity of your energy throughout the day. It's supposed to be really healthy and good for you. So what the woman did that did the recipe that I'm following is she took all of the parts that aren't coffee, blended it all together, put it into muffin tins, froze it, and then you just pull out one pot at a time plop it into your coffee and you're good to go. It's just supposed to be a lot faster than like making it from scratch every single morning. So I was like, that's really interesting and I wonder if it actually does increase the um, energy I have throughout the day and just make it a little bit more stable, if that makes sense. So what you're going to need for this recipe is a really good quality butter. This is grass-fed butter. No, hold on. <laughs> the, the butter is not fed grass, but the cows that make the butter are fed grass. You know what I mean. Some really good organic coconut oil, cocoa powder, some vanilla, and a little bit of stevia or some sugar if that's what you have on hand. Then you blend it all together, put it on the stove to melt down, and then you pour it into little mini muffin tins. I didn't have any of those little tins, so I just used an ice cube tray, so you could totally do that. Um, and remember, it's not supposed to fill up like an entire ice cube, or at least my ice cube tray, it's not supposed to fill up an entire one. But what I'm trying to say is there's not a ton that goes into each cup of coffee, just as a heads up. I froze them overnight and I stuck one into my coffee this morning and I just put it in and it immediately made my coffee extremely cold. So you are probably going to need to microwave your coffee after, so if you find that that will just eliminate any of the healthy benefits, 
this is probably not the recipe for you. Then I mixed it all together and it didn't look like I would normally have coffee, which is very, very sugary and milky. Like not like a Starbucks ice wrap level of sugary, but like more than black coffee. So I tasted it and I'm not gonna lie to you, I didn't like it. It was not sweet enough for me, it was not milky enough for me, it just tasted like a little bit creamier black coffee. So if you like black coffee, but you want it to feel a little bit more substantial, you'd probably really like this. Um, Chris actually quite liked it. He likes his coffee not as sugary sweet as I do, um, and he found this to be really, really nice. I'm still testing out the whole like energy stabilizing element to it. So I'll let you guys know in the info bar if I have any sort of breakthroughs on that end. Um, but overall, I had to add some milk and some sugar to this to make it, you know, drinkable for me. So again, it wasn't something that I would make as is. But with the milk and sugar, it does taste good. You can taste a little bit of the coconutty butteriness, but it's not overpowering in any way. Um, so I don't mind it. I don't know what kind of benefits I'm going to see from it, but I will keep you posted, let you know what's up. And then the last hack, number three, is to create a vanilla latte sugar scrub. Does that not sound amazing? And this is actually a really nice recipe to use if you have any leftover coffee grounds because I use a French press because I'm really on maintenance. I just find personally that it tastes better. So I'm taking the grounds and I'm putting those in with some brown sugar as well as some baking soda and oil of your choice. I'm using coconut oil because I had it downstairs for the rest of the recipes. And then a little bit of vanilla extract. Then you just mix it all together and apply it to your skin as you would a regular scrub. And it's supposed to be very exfoliating. It's going to add a lot of nice nutrients to the skin and make it really super silky soft. Um, in applying it to my skin, I will say that I will not use this in the morning. I would only use it at night because your skin does feel a little bit on the greasy side. So um, just as a heads up to you. And the other thing I'm not sure about is the actual use of the coffee grounds in the shower because I don't know if that's really good for the drain at all. So I would probably only use that if you have one of those like little catcher things in your drain to catch any of those coffee grounds so you could dispose of them properly. Um, just because I don't, I don't want to mess with that whole like piping system that I know nothing about. But it smells incredible. Your skin feels amazing after. And again, a good way of reusing some of those coffee grounds. Another one, by the way, if you don't want to use this, put it into like any plant life that you have with a little bit of water. They grow like you would not believe from the use of coffee grounds. Oh my gosh, it's crazy. And that's everything for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you want to see more hacks tested. And if you have any requests, so leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos every Saturday. And check out my Rates Loves channel for new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you, girls. Mwah.